Hey everybody, welcome back to Therapist Unmasked. I'm Ashley. And I'm Sam. And today you're joining us as we have a little catch up from our couple months hiatus. We hope you enjoy the episode and let's roll the intro. Samantha, we're back. We're finally back after how many months now? Two, three months now. Yeah. Yeah. November, we filmed our last one with your friend. Yes. Yes. How are you? How are we feeling? (laughs) (laughs) It's been a while. Like, we haven't been in this studio since since that time. Yeah. It's been I don't even know how to film anymore. I don't even like I feel awkward. I feel weird. Yeah. It's weird. (laughs) Because here's the thing I see you. I talk to you almost every day. Yeah. So we know mm-hmm. what's been going on in our lives. Yeah. For the but past they don't. couple of months. No, no one else knows. And I think it's time for like a little catch up. Yeah, for sure. So to start off, where are you in your mental health Oof. today? Not good. <laughs> Not good. Okay. I mean, honestly, is it ever at this point? I feel like every single episode I've said, I've said this, that it's just not in a good place and I think that's really sad for myself to be honest with you just even saying that out loud um I so <laughs> I thought in 2023 I left all the shit men behind but no. apparently not so I had recently started speaking to somebody at the beginning of January uh-huh. and you know things are cool we were vibing n- natural conversations everything I was like wow this man like really matches my energy we would try to hang out and something bad would always happen every single time. Okay. Every single time. Yeah. Oh, like this family member's in the hospital or like I messed up my shoulder at work. It's the last time we tried to hang out, it was because he got into a car accident. Okay. Mind you, the car was totally fine. There was just like little, a little minor, bend, a little yeah, scratch. little scratches. <laughs> okay, but like men and some men in their cars. Think yes, that's, yes, that's so, like yes. the the end of the world. A little scratch. Like when I wasn't able to see this person, he would go at my A for most of the day and then tell me by the end of the day, like, oh, we can't hang out because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So that specific day, he went MIA, and I was like, oh, great, we're probably not gonna hang out now. Yeah. So then he texts me close to like five, six o'clock. He says I got into an accident. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, okay, so that means that we're not hanging out, huh? And well, I mean, Ashley, in his defense, <laughs> if he says I got into an accident, so <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. I did say like, oh my god, are you okay? Like, what's going on? And then I proceeded to say, <laughs> <laughs> no. But of course, I was like, oh my god, is your like, are you okay? Yeah. So after that. He went MIA again, Mm -hmm. didn't hear from for for hours. So then I got frustrated, right? Mm -hmm. Because I was like, okay, like if we're not going to hang out, just just let me know. Like, it's fine. I'm sure you have things going on right now. But I said it in a way where like I was frustrated. You could tell that I was frustrated Mm -hmm. when I said it. And I was frustrated because it was the idea of little efforts that I would try to make to try to hang out with this person. It was always just no, 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 no. And this person was always saying, I'm this great person. Nobody has a heart like mine. Nobody's able That's to match my energy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they have so, to compensate for themselves. So meeting. every Samantha, when I say every single day, at least once a day, this person was telling me those kind of things. I swear to God. So if you're this good person that has this good heart and everything, like you say that your actions match up with your words, then like, where is it the math ain't math yeah exactly (laughs) so like where is it right yeah so he was like oh i never said that we weren't gonna hang out but like i don't like the way that you came at me and then so i was like you know what let me let me take that out and let me let me apologize right Mm -hmm. like i'm sorry i didn't take your feelings into consideration this is not gonna happen again um i was just you know really excited to see you and it just it just we just couldn't and like it frustrated me yeah so after that he was like nah like that wasn't cool like that really rubbed me off the wrong way and i kept saying like no i take full accountability like i'm, I'm sorry that i acted that way so then he was like okay let's hang out on tuesday mm-hmm. so tuesday comes and he's like oh we'll hang out at this time this time comes didn't happen and he was like oh let me hit you up by like nine o'clock at night i was like nine o'clock at night on a tuesday for real and he's like let me hit you up by then and i'll let you know when i'm available nine o'clock comes 
and my ghosts me doesn't talk to me again after that it drove me crazy to know that to him i was like the victim or the villain in his story of like oh i reacted a certain way so like he cut me off because i reacted that way and that's it he was like i'm not with that toxic stuff like i'm not doing none of that and i'm like toxic so i've come a long way since my last relationship because that relationship was toxic yes. and i never want to put myself in a toxic situation ever again in my life ever since then yeah so for him to just say that i'm toxic based off of one reaction that wasn't fair to me mm -hmm. I wish that this person was like, okay, so she acted this way. Let me figure out, like, why she really acted this way. And, like, talk to me about it, right? So mm -hmm. he completely cut me off. And I was an idiot and was begging this man to talk to me. No, 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 no Ashley. No. We, know, we don't beg men. I know. So I, I was doing that, right? I was like, talk to me. Like, let's have a conversation. I was like, yo, we don't even have to, like, try things out. I don't really care. But it was just the idea of being a villain in somebody else's story. Mm -hmm. That drove me crazy because I know the type of person that I am and I hate that I left that kind of impression on somebody, mm -hmm. you know? We ended up speaking last weekend Aww. and he was like, you know what, let's talk in person. And then I was like, no, no, no. Like, I'm cool with just a phone call or anything because he's probably going to flake because he has a track record of yeah. flaking. Mm -hmm. So he was like, no, like, Sunday, that's it. Like, we're going to hang out. And I'm like, okay, fine. And then on Sunday comes, I'm like, hey, just confirming we're hanging out. Yep, we're hanging out. No worries. Just he's like around f seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. I said, OK, S around seven o'clock. No, it was like five, six around there. He was like, we're probably going to hang out around nine or ten. And I was like, oh, that's not good, because usually that just means I'm probably not going to end up seeing him. Close to nine comes and I'm like, hey, so what's going on? Like, are we, are we going to like, I just want to confirm that we're still definitely hanging out. Mm -hmm homie blocks me blocks me everywhere no. my number my my instagram ain't everything worth it. Ain't worth it. and then i was like i was so angry because i was like this man is a coward because he could not face you face me right and and i told him that he hurt me because again like he was talking this big game and none of his actions matched up with his words and like that hurt right because mm -hmm. I've been let down so many times before and the fact that he was just easy to just leave like that, that hurt. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he said to me was, I didn't hurt you. Yeah, I was like the audacity on this man to tell me what I was feeling. It's I'm insane. sorry, Samantha. Like, if you have a good girl in front of you who's willing to do anything and everything for you and then you just ghost them off of one thing and don't even give them an explanation. Well, here's the thing. He also didn't give you the chance. We're grown. We're grown ass women mm -hmm. who deserve better than that. That's and what I'm saying. And I think that he's a coward for that. I do. I no, think that men who do that, knowing that there's a good girl in front of you and you want to ghost them off of one thing and can't even give them an explanation. Sorry. Not even ghost. Just like don't even communicate in general. Exactly like communicate your feelings communicate what's going on even if you're like in a full-blown relationship like it hurts yeah. less when there's communication saying like it's not gonna work out sorry like it hurts a lot less than to just be it does. ghosted no it does i'm literally queen of being ghosted at this point i'm so over it and so leading. i don't think you're 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 not on that boat alone it's happened to me many, many times. Um, I was contemplating on sharing this or not, but, well, you know. They don't know. Um, I'm recently single. Again. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's talk about that. How are we feeling? What's going on? Because um, in the last episode we did, you were not single. I was not single in the last episode. Um you see, I, and this is why I'm con I was contemplating it, because I have a platform where I am able <laughs> to voice my opinions in yeah. any way, shape, or form. Yeah. However, it can go good or it can go bad. Um, and I only I have that control. True. So um, in the beginning, I felt a very mixture of emotions. Now it is what it is. I, I've put myself in that mentality of whether this person is in my life or not. 
I don't really care. I have a group of people in my life that as long as they're with me, I don't feel the need to add any more. I feel like I have a really good support system. To be honest, I don't need any more friends in my life. I feel like I have the ones that I need. And I mean, my mom always says, you know, the friends that you have, the the most true to you, you can count on one hand and still have fingers left over. For sure. So, I mean, I feel like I have a really good basis of friends mm -hmm. and of family support. You know, obviously, like, when you leave a relationship, you're sad. Yeah, of you're, course. You're, it's hard. It's really hard. But the way that this relationship was left, it was conflicting. Very conflicting. I felt like you didn't get full closure. Uh, so here's the thing. I recently talked to him again. Uh, I think we went, like, two, three months of no contact. But I know, but even even at that time, though, oh, in no, that time, yeah, yeah. you didn't so get that closure. In, in, when speaking about lack of communication, that was key. That was very key in communication and in terms of attempting to communicate feelings and stuff. Um, I know I definitely wanted to like meet in person to talk, yep. and he was very busy. And it's not an excuse, obviously, if this is a relationship that either you want to fight for it or not, regardless, you're supposed to talk to that person and actually execute the feelings. And at one point he did say, I don't know how to talk about my feelings. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, he said that. Um, and I was like, and this is all over text. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, you start by saying how this situation is affecting you and stuff like that. But ultimately, we never got the chance to actually speak in person because I know for a fact, like a lot would have gone resolved. But a lot you of anxiety. I wanted to. A lot of anxiety that I had would have gotten resolved. A lot of scenarios that I found out about would have also gotten discussed. But no, I had to resort to text like a high schooler. And that sucked because I obviously like I don't communicate that way. If something's yeah. bothering me, I will text you. I will call you. I will say, hey, can we like get together? Definitely the situation could have been better. It could have been better executed. We could have had a better communication like adults. Um, like I said, recently we did talk again over text. I hate to say it like I did blow up at him. I let out all that frustration that I needed to but let out. But you had every right to. I you did. had every right to be angry because, again, you didn't get closure in that, like at that time. Yes. And you deserved that. And there were a few things that I had heard that, you know, were not the best scenario. Of course. So, obviously, like, it was, like, bottled up inside Some for emotions. a very long time. You bottled it up like crazy because every time I would ask you, are you good? You're, you're like, yeah, I'm okay. But, like, no, bitch. You can't put it past me. You can't. Um, but you know, my motto is just don't let them show. Don't let it show that it bothers you. The, whatever situation it is, I will get past it. Mm -hmm. It just That's depends true. how I react in that situation of how I'm going to get past it. If I know that the situation is bad and I blow up at that person... In that moment, I'm going to look at, like, the one that's crazy. I'm going to come out of that situation looking as if I had all the fault. Regardless, if I were to keep my cool and actually explain it, then I come out winning. And that's how I saw that, the initial conversation. I did not explode. I did not do anything remotely bad. I hate to insult people. That's mm. my thing. Mm. I will never insult somebody in an argument because that's not how I like to be portrayed either. I don't want somebody to insult me. So why would another person want me to insult them? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it doesn't do any good. It's in no way, shape, or form going to make me look better. If anything, mm -hmm. it's going to make me look worse. That's just how that conversation needed to be at that time also i was in the middle of an anxiety attack that i because you remember you know um when the initial conversation okay. started and it was all caused by anxiety yes 
And then the conversation did not help the anxiety. So I had to pick and choose my battles. Either pick to calm myself down or fight with him about the situation. So I picked myself. I picked to let this go rather than live a life of like anxiety written. And yeah, I didn't want to do that. I still don't want to do that. And at the end of the day, if I'm ever in a relationship where I feel like I have anxiety, it's not meant to be. Absolutely. And I always told you that too, because you were very anxious throughout that relationship too. And I was like, Sam, if that's how you feel, you shouldn't have to feel like that with somebody else. So this is a good thing for you, Sam. No, and I know, and I know thing. you know that. No, I know. No, 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 no. no. So, <laughs> I've known it. <laughs> Not gonna lie, like the majority of my friends, when I told them I was single, I think you were one of them. <laughs> it no, needed no, to happen. You, yes, it didn't need to happen. I think my friends, majority of my friends, were like, "Woo, single Sammy's yeah. back. Let's have some fun." And I was just like, at first, I wasn't really having. I was like, mm. I know you weren't. Like I said, I'm not insulting anybody or anything. Yeah, we're not doing that. I, but I genuinely see this as a nice person who just did not know how to convey what they were feeling and would prefer to just let things go. But you don't and work I'm that not, way. I'm not like that. No, yeah, I'm definitely not like that. that. So our our, our, persona- our personalities did not really mix because there were things that I was anxious about and I would think about talking to him about. But then I would know what he would say and I would just be like, nah, it's okay. I'm not like going... I pushed my feelings down to make situations better or happier and I know I shouldn't have done that. So... Mm -hmm. I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming him for how, for the breakup in general. Um, It was mutual. Like, the mutual things could have been worked on, spoken about. Um, Ultimately, you know, it takes two people. So I'm not saying he was solely to blame. I'm not saying I'm solely to blame. I'm just saying, you know, it was a thing that happened. It's done with. We're moving on. (laughs) Yeah. I have not, though. And I don't think I will be going into the dating pool for quite some time. Yeah. Because I just feel like I need time to myself. Yeah. And also, <laughs> I see what you go through. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Samantha. That's <laughs> uh, no, well, awesome. Not just you. My other friends, too. Like, they tell me about their dates. They tell me about who they're going to go see. And then I get a recap of what happened. I'm just like, I'm okay. I'm good. These type of people come to me not because, not because, like, I, I don't know why I attract them so much. I don't know. I don't know, Samantha. I, I don't said know. this once. You did. I, or I've said this a few times. The people that you manifest will be the ones that come to you. The, I'm the manifesting feeling, good no, 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 men. No, no, no. What are you talking no, no, about? No, 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 no. But here's the thing. The emotions you put out there are the things that people see and the people that you attract. If you hold yourself up high, Mm -hmm. you hold yourself with grace and pride and respect, men can see that from far away and they'll be like, oof, that's a woman who has confidence. See, that's the problem though. I thought I had that with this last person, right? I Mm -hmm. thought, because again, like it just, everything was just like really natural. Everything was really good, but then that happened, right? And then I was feeling so anxious. I don't know why like after everything happened and he ghosted me and everything like that i was feeling so anxious just i guess again the idea of being a villain in somebody else's story Mm -hmm. right and i had a conversation with my cousin one of the biggest takeaways of our conversation was just like if you continue to dwell on these things on people who don't even matter if you continue to dwell on just the past in general you're gonna continue to block good things from coming your way Mm mm-hmm right so then i was like she's right so i was like you know what like that's motivating if she's in a better mental space and has been able to let go of her past and things that she's been through then i can too Mm -hmm. so we had that conversation and and mind you that day i was a mess because like that was the same day everything happened and Mm -hmm. i was a mess but then after we had the conversation i was like okay that helps change my mentality a little bit Mm mm-hmm so I was okay. I was kind of just like training my brain to be like, no, like, let that go. Let that go. Let that go. You're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. 
And then I ended up having therapy just this past week on Tuesday. And we talked about the whole thing. And I told her, like, what my cousin said and everything. But then I, like, broke down. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I broke down crying because, I don't know, I felt... Even when I was trying to, like, rewire my brain to say, like, no, let this go. You're going to be fine, whatever. I still felt the hurt. So when I was telling her these things... And our sessions are virtual. Uh So I was able to see myself on camera, of course. And I was able to see, like, how broken i looked and it made me it made me cry even more to see that i see your own reflection yeah and then i was this sad and i was this broken and i'm sad because like i don't deserve this Mm -hmm. i don't deserve to be mistreated i don't deserve to be left without an explanation you Mm -hmm. know like i'm a pretty understanding person and i'm good to talk to i'm big on communication Mm -hmm. so like when people can't give me that it's just like what is wrong with me okay right now i know there's nothing wrong with me i'm a good person i don't deserve that stuff but in the moments where i'm like in a rut i'm like what is wrong with me that people keep doing this to me because it's a constant cycle that's been like this over and over and over again you know what needs to happen march we're starting off fresh march is in not only a new month it's the beginning of a new year we gotta let this shit go especially being disrespected as much as we have been oh god yeah and and, you know just recently too i felt like i don't know i was in my head too much right i'm an overthinker i'm a negative nancy we already talked about this Mm -hmm. already and i was thinking oh my god what if maybe if i didn't act that way then this wouldn't be happening maybe if i did this a certain way this wouldn't be happening and then i told my my therapist that one time and she was like ashley stop yeah you are gaslighting yourself to thinking that this was all your fault but it's not no he was the one who reached out to you first Uh he was the one who decided to make all the effort that he did Uh he decided to walk away from somebody who feels very strongly for people Mm -hmm. and loves very hard Mm -hmm. that is not your fault exactly so he fumbled yeah not you yeah let's be real we are great women we have careers we have our masters we are well educated we are well spoken for we come from amazing families like we are caring we love with all our hearts we just have not found that person who will show us the equal value that we deserve yeah. from them. And so with that being said, where is your mental health on a scale of 1 to 10? <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 obviously being the best. Yeah. Honestly, Sam, I'm still feeling the aftermath of all of that Fair. Um, because it's just sad to reflect on the fact that like that it keeps happening over and over and yeah. over again. And I don't But besides that, that's only one part of your life but i get fixated on those things Mm -hmm. i really do and i beat myself up it ruins the rest of your day right so now that i'm talking this all out with you and getting this all out i am making a promise to myself and i'm going to hold myself accountable you better because it's going to be on the internet i know and i'm aware (laughs) and this is why i'm i'm talking about this right like i don't know again like I tend to be able to talk about these things more freely on here more than anywhere else. (laughs) So I'm going to let it go. I'm choosing to let it go in the same way that you chose to let your situation go. I'm going to let this go too, because it's me puse mal. Like I, I was really bad because of this situation. Mm -hmm. So I want to let this go to be able to like, not stress about that anymore. I shouldn't, because this person obviously didn't give a shit. He yes. didn't care because he's like, I didn't hurt you. Obviously, he did not no, care. So we're leaving him in the past. Yes. We don't need to think about him anymore. He's gone. He's a blip. Correct. <laughs> Correct. He's bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. So, and, and going forward, I'm not going to let these type of people dictate my moods and just the way I view myself. So Be- again, I ask, where are you on the scale? Okay, right right now, mm-hmm. I'm probably on a, maybe like a six. What we'll can say. you do to make it a seven? All right, motivational interviewer. Um, I just got my certification, okay? So I'm using wait, those Wait, actually? Skills. Yes, I just got my certification because... For motivational interviewing? Yeah, four days of training. Sick. So 
how can we make it a seven i need to get my mental health in check but it's like really hard i had a therapist that would like literally challenge my thoughts like crazy but anyway like she so she hasn't been around right now because she's you know personal reasons so that's been hard it's hard to not have her around so Mm -hmm. like that's been really hard for me right now because she has helped me through so much like when it comes to my grief with my mom when it comes to my last relationship oh my god i wish she was around for for recent events on that so like it's hard it's been hard and i'm working at a job now where it was my absolute dream job but it's very fast uh paced to where i'm mentally drained every single day Mm -hmm. every single day and some days i experience burnout so now it's hard for me to even go boxing Mm -hmm. it's hard for me to even just go to the gym in general i feel like those things help me out with my mental health but i've struggled because when i come home i'm like exhausted exhausted don't want anything to do with anything um that's what i'm struggling with though because i worked in schools prior to this right and like i would get home by 3 30 the latest and i would still have enough time to go to boxing because boxing is usually up until like 6 30 the last class is 6 30 tuesdays and thursdays are at 7 15 so i'm able to make some of those now but anyways back then like i was able to be like okay like i'm home from work and i'm able to make my classes boom done but like now i come home so late to where i miss those classes and then there's also the 715 ones that i can make but then even then those days usually are like the hardest for me because i'm just mentally drained Mm -hmm. all the time so i'm able to do at least like a saturday class Mm -hmm. but i would like to do more right because look i'm not even i'm not happy with the way i look physically right now and that's something that i really want to get in check too but it's just it's hard when my job is so like consuming to me Mm -hmm. emotionally and just everything i know you like to do your makeup i know Mm -hmm. you like to do your nails yeah i know you like to look good Mm -hmm. so i think what you should do in order to start you know it may not be a lot that much of a change but getting up early in the morning picking out your clothes feeling organized And then intentionally making your boxing bag and putting it in the car. My cousin suggested that too. Intentionally doing it in the morning because that way you're, it's in the car, it's there. You have no excuse to not go there from work. That way you don't have to go home. You don't have to like sit down and be like, ugh. you just change. You go to boxing, you do your thing, and then you go home. So one thing that's also been helping is so me and my cousin, like we've been we've been going through stuff. Right. And Mm -hmm. her and I every morning send each other positive affirmations. It's great. And we but so like it's not like we just texted to each other and call it a date. No, I'm very big on positive affirmations for other people, but not for me. Mm -hmm. So and, and I encourage that because there's something powerful about saying things out loud. It is. Right. Yes. So I encouraged her to write positive affirmations for herself, but to read it out loud. Yes. Because the more you read it, the more it's engraved in you and you believe it within yourself, you Mm -hmm. know? So we started doing that in text messages, but like we'll send like like an audio or voice to text kind of thing. It's helped, right? Because that'll set the mood for the rest of the day her and i wake up at the same time for work Mm -hmm. so we'll send it and then i'll be like all right time to get up that's great you know so that's been i have that support yeah um so i recently went to a galentine's thing um that my friend had it was great Mm -hmm. she told us oh like we're gonna be making our like a special galentine's day cocktail each one of us we're gonna make a cocktail that's cute and i (laughs) so normally i was just like okay like that's fine but i didn't anticipate the other things that she had in mind for us because normally we'll just hang out we'll talk have a sip of one or whatever but um no we had other activities and it was painting and then making a mood board so the painting i've been to like i i paint i stink at it but i'm okay with it you know the thing that kind of caught me off guard and i actually was not surprised was very surprised about was the mood board um I didn't grow up making mood boards. 
Mm. I didn't even know what it was. And it was funny because, like, me and my other friend, uh, who I've known my whole life, she was like, yeah, we never made mood boards. It wasn't, it wasn't that big of a thing. And actually, I have it on my phone. Um, and I want to sh- I, <laughs> I took a picture of it because I was just like, you know, I want this. In a big quote, the first one I, it says is, make yourself a priority, which I am horrible at. Oh, same. I, I feel happy when other people are happy. So if that means that I'm going to go out of my way to make sure that that person is okay, I'm going to do it. My cousin actually pointed that out in me too. Like she's like, you want to be like the bestest friend, the bestest girlfriend, the bestest everything. <laughs> she was like, you drain your energy by doing that though. That energy <laughs> that you put into other people, put it into yourself. Exactly. And I have another quote here that says, it's a bad day, not a bad life. And under that quote is actually Adele. Um, and That's I cute. put that there on purpose because mm-hmm. I know, like I've followed her for many years. She's like an amazing singer. Would love mm-hmm. to have her voice, however, I can't sing for Jack. From the get-go, I know she's always suffered with appearances, like people making fun of her and being like, oh my God, she should lose weight. Oh my God, she should do this. Oh my goodness, why is her music so so sad? She went through a divorce. Like, mm-hmm. But regardless of all of that, she still has stayed true to herself and made the music she wants, has had the life she wants, has improved herself for herself. And I strive to be that because I want to make those decisions for myself without going to other people, without being like, oh, what do you think? Oh my God, this. Like, yes. I want to do that. Yep. We presented our mood board in front of all of our friends and we're like, these are our aspirations. And my best friend, who I've known my whole life, when I said, you know, the whole explanation of making myself a priority, she looked at her phone and she's like, huh, interesting. I'm like, what do you mean? (laughs) And she's like, I'm looking at the time and the date. That way I can make a mental note that on this day, Sam said she's going to change her mentality in that aspect. Oh, wow. And I'm just like, she's like, how many times have I told you the same thing? It took for you to make a mood board to actually put that in the air, put that in you, make sure that you do it. I'm just like, okay, okay. <laughs> Your friends are really thoughtful. Like, My when friends it comes are. to these kind of activities, like, that's awesome. And I hope that, like, it really did yeah. push you to want to. Oh, I know for a fact they do. Um, same with, like, my guy friends, my girlfriends, like we, they always are pushing me to be the best person that I can be. We all have very much like a lot of love for each other, I would say. At least yeah. that's how I see it. Yeah. My Valentine's Day was pretty, pretty awesome too. My best friend, Jocelyn, she took me out for dinner and, you know, we just had a nice conversation. And then my, my other best friend, Mary, and she ended up taking me out mm-hmm. um, Friday night just like to make it up. And uh, she gave me a really nice card that... I heard you were the passenger princess. Always. Always. <laughs> certified passenger certified princess. Certified in my car, too. <laughs> Absolutely. I hate driving. But anyways, besides <laughs> the point, she gave me a card that said something along the lines of just, like, you've been through so much, and despite all these things, like, you've been able to shine a light in whatever room that you come across Mm -hmm. and like that was just so like oh like i I, the fact that other people see that in me i'm just like oh man like i love that for me like i i I, it's true i've been through so much and yet i'm still able to keep a smile and and do what i do out at work um be a good Mm -hmm. friend all of it and it's hard it really is mentally draining to do Mm -hmm. all of that when i'm going through things but she knows everything that I go through. So mm-hmm. the fact that she knows that and still is just like, you know, like you're doing great despite mm-hmm. all of those shitty things that are happening to you. Like that literally makes my heart so happy. And it's a good reminder to just keep going. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. sometimes life just gets too much that you just want to give up. Like me in the last few weeks, I was like, yo, I just want to melt away and never feel anything again. Like that is that is it, you know? Yeah. It's encouraging. It really was. And I'm happy to have a really good support system too that sees all these things in me and kind of reminds me of things that I forget myself. Going forward, Sam, let's talk about how we 
are going to handle the rest of 2024. Oof. Okay. I personally, I think the rest of 2024 is going to be met with some hard decisions for me. I think a lot of changes will come um, and I will eventually need to make decisions that I've been holding off for a very long time. Um, but I hope, no, I will persevere. <laughs> I will persevere from them. And at the end of the day, whoever stays with me stays with me. I think that with this last person, I kind of lost myself again a little bit. I feel like I lost myself a little bit because, you know, I was like begging him to talk to me and I was just like, I was making myself this big ball of anxiety for somebody that like literally just did not care. And I said that I was never going to do that again after my last relationship. Mm -hmm. And I did it again. Mm -hmm. Right. So like now I'm like, all right, like that was enough. Like I can't do that to myself again. Mm -hmm. You know, so to me, like going forward, I'm going to have more respect for myself to just like if that that person doesn't want to talk to me, whatever. Bye. On to the next one. Right. I don't want to be in the dating pool anytime soon, especially after that anyways. And that's fine because I think that the biggest lesson that I've learned right now is that I need to rebuild myself back up again. You need to learn who you are. Because I feel like I kind of did that after my, you know, after getting out of my relationship. But I feel like I kind of lost myself again. Mm -hmm. And so I need to take the time to rebuild myself, to know my worth, to know, like to have some confidence in myself. and, And again, like, going whether that be like going back to the gym and doing the boxing stuff you know Mm -hmm. doing things that make me happy because i'm so tired of just being in my thoughts of like what's wrong with me um am i a bad person maybe i should change the way that i love people but i shouldn't have to change the way that i love people i shouldn't because the right person will accept that it's funny that you say that because um my mom i was having a conversation with my mom the other day um (laughs) she uh, she calls me um, very, very like. She doesn't just call me. She's like, "You're stubborn. You're cabeza dura. Hmm. You're cabeza dura." And I'm just like, "Yeah, I know." And she's like, oh, "God bless the next guy that, <laughs> that you end up going out with." And she's like, "Hey, the next guy will know I'm stubborn. The next guy will know my quirks. They will Period. know everything about <laughs> me and still love me regardless of that fact. And that will be the person that I marry, knowing him, knowing." that I am this way in general. Like, Period. And they, I don't need to change who I am just to please them. Yeah. Or my attributes, my characteristics or anything. Like, they will love me for who I am, for what I bring to the table, for what I am offering. Yep. And if they don't, then goodbye and on to the next. Yep. And so, again, like, for me, I'm not going to let a person like that dictate just how I feel about myself. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that anymore. No, because, you should not. Because I know that I'm a good person. Nobody can take that away from me. Mm-hmm. Nobody. I think, you know, to kind of tell our viewers what we have upcoming for them. So we have a lot of exciting interviews with therapists from different states, different backgrounds, different interventions so excited and we finally figured out all the virtual stuff so yes so we're doing virtual (laughs) so we'll be seeing them virtually um because you know before we were like no like let's have them come in in person Mm -hmm. but obviously we want to like expand yeah on our guests there are only so many people here in jersey (laughs) and get to know other therapists from different states and how they handle their clients and everything and how where they're at with their mental health i'm really excited i'm excited it's not just even therapists it's also like people who want to explain where they're at in their lives and how they've overcome their situations which i love for us because yeah you know a lot of people they're not always as forthcoming about the struggles that they face as much as we are it's always the best thing not only to learn about other people but also Mm -hmm. to be able to hear the struggles that sometimes we think we face alone Mm -hmm. in reality we don't Mm -hmm. 
exactly exactly and we also plan to be a little bit more consistent with our social media stuff too yes um, we like that <laughs> yeah so i'm really excited about that to put out some content on both instagram and tiktok yes um aside from our just just our clips so that's gonna be really exciting that's pretty much it all we have the biggest excitement is just like the therapists that we're going to be interviewing and the guests that we're going to have because we're going to get real we're going to get really real it's and it's going to be emotional and they're going to be talking about things that are just incredibly deep and i'm excited for that i am excited i'm excited for us i'm excited for everything thank you guys again for joining us on another wonderful episode of therapist unmasked and we'll see you guys on the next episode so Please like, subscribe, share with your friends and family, comment on our video, listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, follow us on Instagram and TikTok, therapists underscore unmasked, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.